very good morning to you. And uh, I think we'll dodge the raindrops on our way in. Uh, I invite the choir to follow the, the clergy in procession as we walk into church for the singing of the hymn and the congregation to follow. Uh, every blessing on your holy week ahead of you, and so it's a joy to walk that journey with you. <clears throat> Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Behold, your King comes to you, O Zion, meek and lowly, sitting upon an ass. Ride on in the cause of truth and for the sake of justice. Your throne is the throne of God. It endures forever. And the scepter of your kingdom is a righteous scepter. You have loved righteousness and hate evil. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We acknowledge Aturabul and Yagarapul people, the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather today, stewards on behalf of the Almighty Creator. We also pay our respects to the elders, past, present and emerging, and extend that respect to all Torres Strait Islander and Aboriginal people who join us. We endeavour to walk alongside you towards justice. The Lord be with you. And also with you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we gather to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. Christ entered in triumph into the holy city to complete his work as our to suffer, to die, and to rise to new life. Let us walk with him in faith and love, the way of the cross, so that united with him in his sufferings, we may share in his resurrection and in his life. I invite you to hold up your branches for blessing. God, our Saviour, whose Son, Jesus Christ, entered Jerusalem as Christ to suffer and to die, bless these palms that they may be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our exalted king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Father, may the blessing. May the Lord be on your mind and on your lips and your heart that you may proclaim this gospel worthily and well to the ears and hearts of this congregation in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you. When they were approaching Jerusalem, at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, untying the colt. They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. 
Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before... In the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jerusalem. Christ, amen. Let us pray. 
Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love for the human race sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take our nature and to suffer death upon the cross. In your mercy, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Would you please be seated? A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he awakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards, I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty, and all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Hear the word of the Lord. A reading from the St. Paul's letters to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, 
and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God is also highly exalted from him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Hear the word of the Lord. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. 
But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, any one for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison <coughs> with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene and the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and he divided his clothes among him, casting lots to decide what he should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, 
He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. This is the passion of the Lord. May the words of my lips and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. There is a great, noble and ancient Christian practice of taking something that's ancient and pagan, cleansing them in the name of the Lord and subduing them under the Lordship of Christ. Think, for example, back to St. Patrick's Day. He went to Ireland, cleansed the land of demons in the name of the Trinity, and gave way for the beauty of Celtic Christianity to be born. And today I'm going to do something similar. Uh, It's actually going to take two days. This is a sermon in two parts. You get half today, and you have to come back on Maundy Thursday for the second half. Now, the pagan practice will cleanse and conquer in the name of King Jesus is wrapped up in this phrase, think global, act local. We're going to march in and plant the flag of God's kingdom on top of this hill. Now, I said this sermon is in two parts. Today, we will think global like a Christian and then on Thursday, we'll look at what it means for the Christian to act local. Now, when I first begin to start thinking global, it's tough. 
there are wars and famine, and there's all these governments propping themselves up and then coming crashing back down again. The digital world is no less dangerous, because there the culture war is raging in it. It doesn't matter which side is speaking, because they're both preaching doom and gloom. The only thing that can help me sleep at night, if I'm thinking global, is that Jesus willingly went to the cross and he went for the sake of the world. He went in to confront two of the worst expressions of global unrest and he disarmed them both. He strode into the midst of injustice and he made it powerless by his truth. Then he went to where violence is at its worst and he unraveled violence with his love. So, injustice, it's wormed its way across the globe. Not only is it on our screens, but it's in our lives as well. Now, when Jesus was arrested by the scribes and the Pharisees and dragged into that midnight kangaroo court, he sat in the same seat of every other victim, of every other injustice. His mockery of a trial is the culmination of every other lie, scheme and trick that we humans have ever played on one another. But he didn't try and fight back, nor did he resign himself to misery. He went into his tool belt and he pulled out the right tool for the job. He brought out the one weapon that could slay this dragon. Jesus used the truth, the truth of who he is the one who is equal to God. And so Jesus has not only shown us an example to follow by proclaiming the truth of Jesus, but he's also truly given us the means by which all that global injustice is overcome. Where do you think this is all going to finish up? Do you really think the bad guys are going to win in the end? For all their schemes and plans, there's one thing that they can't defend against. Jesus is Lord. Jesus was then dragged before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. Now, when Jesus stood before this man, he stood before that part of human nature that thinks violence is the ultimate expression of power. Now, some would have us fear at the violence of an army coming across the seas to invade us. Others would make us be fearful of the violence of an unjust government. And around the globe right now, there are all people suffering under the violence of midwits, people whose imagination can only reach power expressed in violence and can't get any further. But Jesus shows us a greater power, He has it, but he doesn't use it. He could have called down legions of angels to defend him. But he showed a greater power, the power of love. Because he loved the world so much, Jesus came and gave his life so that we may too have his greater power, the power of the love of Jesus. Violence is a dead end right? It doesn't win in the end. They tried it on Jesus. Look where where it got them. Jesus is the king of the world. There is no violence that cannot be defeated by his love. And so, with all these troubles around the globe keeping us up at night, how does this morning's story of Jesus' death give us any sort of assurance and peace? because his death has saved the world. When he hung on that cross, he took all the rage of injustice and the pain of violence in our stead, for our sake. Because of his truth and love, death was not the end. He was laid in a tomb. That tomb's now empty. He rose again from the grave ascended into heaven, sat down at the right hand of God the Father, 
who turned to him and he said, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. And then he said, Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun. Jesus is king. He's sitting on the throne. All things on heaven and on earth are given to him. And he rules with truth and love. The globe's now on notice. Those preaching doom and gloom are wrong. Who do you trust more? The newspaper or the Bible? Who do you believe? The guy on that YouTube video or Jesus? Jesus is king and his truth and his love are defeating every injustice, every act of violence. The darkness of the cross is the pathway to the light of the resurrection. Sleep easy tonight. It's only getting better from here. Please stand as you are able, and together let us affirm the faith of the Church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that he is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world and thank God for God's goodness. The response to let us pray to the Lord is, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Our King has entered his city. Our palms and cries of homage fade away as the words of the Passion tell the story of his suffering and death. Let us bring our prayers to the Father through the Son he gave up for us with love beyond our comprehension. For the church all around the world following the Saviour during Holy Week, let us pray to the Lord. For peoples of all races and nations who seek peace, the source of the eternal salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For those who suffer mental, physical or spiritual anguish, let us pray to the Lord. 
for a spirit of penance, reflection, and gratitude during these chosen days, let us pray to the Lord. For war and violence between nations to give way to God's peace, let us pray to the Lord. For healing of the sick among, among us, Jen, Jenny Clark, Roy Gorman, Rod Hardacre, Liz Jarvis, Robert Normoyle, Judy Henderson Place, Jill Sharwood, Sandra Spring, and Robin Teesfield, let us pray to the Lord. For the gentle repose of the faithful departed, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we offer our prayers for healing for our sister in Christ, Mary Grimshaw, in all that she is facing at this time. Thanking you for signs of recovery, but praying earnestly that it will continue and that you will comfort her family who gather around her at this time. We also hold up to the throne of the heavenly grace in prayers for healing our brother in Christ, Father Colin Roberts, thanking you also for recovery that he has made and praying that it will continue. And in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, we pray for the repose of the souls of our sisters and brothers of this parish whose anniversaries of death occur at this time, and among them for the repose of Eileen Verinder, Joy Arden, Ethel Evans, Edith McKenney, Everdeen Souter Robertson, Daphne Claris, Susan Smith, Alice Tate, Jane Seepel, Grace Pollard, Margaret Basso, Tony McLeod, Rachel Williams, Jeff McCoy, Richard Ashby, and Doro, and Doro Zalatel. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, let light perpetual shine upon Lord and Father, with serene courage your Son went forth to die for us. Grant us a share in his strength as we bring these prayers to you. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Would you please stand as you are able for the greeting of peace. <clears throat> Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for it. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray that you accept this sacrifice which we offer to you with humble and contrite hearts. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. O glory and honor be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, <clears throat> who became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. He offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. The tree of defeat became the tree of victory. Where life was lost, their life has been restored. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was handed over, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, 
drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. In obedience to this command, Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honor and glory are yours, Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
This is the Lord's table. All who seek God's mercy are welcome here. You are welcome to come forward to receive Holy Communion as bread and wine. If you prefer only to receive bread, uh, you are welcome to do so. If you do not wish to receive communion, you are invited to come forward for a blessing. And please hold your booklet in your hand to signify your wish.
Let us pray. God, our help and strength, through these holy mysteries, confirm our faith that by the death and resurrection of your Son, we may walk in the way of salvation. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your Spirit. Please make yourself comfortable for some brief notices. Very good morning to you, both folks here in church and also joining us online. Uh, it's um, a privilege and a joy to be with you at the start of this most holy of weeks um, as we journey together uh, towards uh, the great joy of Easter. Our Easter services are published on the back page of the Pew Bulletin. Um, the um, main services in uh, bold type, uh, as you can see, um, the choir has been rehearsing phenomenally hard and there is a great, um, a great array of, of beautiful, powerful, sacred music um, in our Triduum services coming up and I do encourage you to come along to those and to be uplifted in our worship um, in, this t in this holy time. If you're able to assist, uh, if you're able to assist in um, any of the services by way of reading or being greeter at the door, we still need a few folks for those. Um, please do let me know. Choruses, if you could perhaps let me know over morning tea if you'd be keen to read, and anyone else uh, to fulfill any of those roles so that we can um, offer the fullness of that worship. Um, our services at Aveo and Opal will be held this coming Tuesday. You're welcome to come along to them. And also, if you um, are willing to give feedback on Father Ted's homily, it's um, a great source of help and encouragement uh, in his uh, formation and in, in his ministry. So please do um, do that um, if you can. I look forward to seeing you during the week and wish you every blessing in this holy week. Would you please stand as you're able as we sing the missional hymn. May the Father, who so loved the world that he gave his only Son, bring you by faith to his eternal life. Amen. Amen. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of his cross. Amen. May the Spirit, who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory. Set your minds on life and peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. 
Thanks be to God.